good afternoon students so this will be fourth class for unit science measurement okay so now in the last class we have discussed about uh, practical units other than si units practical units for uh, measurement of length <coughs> we have learned that for measuring the practical units for measuring length will be fermi angstrom even uh, micrometer they are very small units for measuring the length right or not sorry <coughs> for uh, measuring small lengths we have used like you know fermi and uh, micrometer nanometer and angstrom these are all the smaller units for measuring the lengths right smaller lengths and uh, for measuring bigger lengths bigger length like you know uh, distance between the two stars distance between the planets like distance from planet to star like bigger distances to measure we have uh, learned the distance we have learned the units light year light year uh, astronomical unit and then parsec these are all the uh, bigger uh, practical units for distances right in the same way for uh, masses you have learned you know for um, big time we, like we have learned you know solar day like so solar year and these are all some of the practical units for measuring the bigger time for smaller time you have learned shake one shake equal to 10 to the power minus 8 second likewise in the same way uh, even uh, we have gone through masses smaller masses are measured using elect uh, atomic mass units smaller masses and in the same way bigger masses uh, we we can we can uh, Uh, measure with the help of units called quintal ton and you know chandrashekhar limit these are all you have learned the units for measuring small uh, uh, small quantity big quantity these are all practical units for measuring you know mass length and time practical units now this now presently now you have learned the regarding units now how to measure measuring process now will go for i i just repeat here in the last class you have learned the units which employ which we use for measuring two small distances two big distances two small masses two big masses and even two small time and two big time we have learned units units we employ we we use we employ in case of small and then big but question comes how to measure them now we will go for how to measure very small lens and then how to measure very big lens how to measure very small mass and how to measure very big ma big mass so intermediate uh, like intermediate lens we can measure no problem but very big lens and very small lens okay let me take size of the molecule very 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 small length like distance between the stars very very big length how to measure two small length and two big length that we go for no now from today we will see how to measure the one which you cannot measure directly directly means in the presence of you some quantity you cannot measure we have to employ indirect methods right or not so we'll see now first we'll go now here <coughs> methods for measuring the first length methods for measuring the length first then methods for measuring the mass then methods for measuring the time right there is no problem with intermediate things problem is too massive and too low how can they measure right that we go for it see here <clears throat> okay so direct methods for measuring the lens let me take the first one now direct methods for measuring for measuring lens direct methods here there is see here, in direct methods we 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 measure intermediates in direct methods so you, as far as length is concerned in direct method what are the instrument we use for finding that intermediate lens so the instrument that we like you know in direct method using meter scale let me take the first is meter scale using this meter scale we measure like of the order of like you know 10 to the power minus 3 meter to 
we can even take 10 to the power 2 meter in that range we can you know there are direct method what is the meaning of direct method direct method means the person who is measuring should be present with an instrument okay or not like his physical presence must be there right direct like for example i am measuring the distance between this wall to that wall i'll take a scale i'll present uh, with the scale and i'll just go on measuring like one, one meter two meter like that presence of person presence of individual with an instrument he is using that is what you can call direct method so in the direct method for as far as length measurement is concerned uh, we use meter scale and its capacity for meter scale 10 to the power minus 3 meter to we hardly take 100 meter like 10 kilometer 20 kilometer when two massive lengths comes two big length comes like you know like measuring taking meter scale like in one meter two meter it's uh, uh, very unscientific there we use indirect methods for measuring two big lengths like 10 kilometer 20 like if you go beyond 100 using scale is not meaningful right we have to imply we have to use indirect methods so roughly meter scale can come into play so measuring this range in the same way we have <coughs> vernier calipers vernier calipers so this vernier calipers you will use it in lab once that practical starts so this vernier caliper again a device used to measure again let me say at the end of a length of course it is used to measure uh, internal diameter external diameter that is there but at the end of all still it is a length so in vernier calipers is used for measuring the lens so depending on uh, lab uh, what we use in the lab vernier calipers what we use in industries so their uh, bigger you know range will differ but the lowest value it can measure is 10 to the power minus 4 meter the lowest the lowest value that vernier caliper can measure is 10 to the power minus 4 meter so biggest will be like you know it may be 1 millimeter 2 millimeter that that bigger range it depends on the uh, vernier calipers the capacity and in lab in physics in the a student's lab here and in industries and in scientific labs, their maximum range differs that I'm not going to take. Okay. So here in the third, we have screw gauge, screw gauge or uh, even you can take spirometer, spirometer. Remember these names are, you know, new to you. You will get to know once that lab starts, you can hold them, you can use them. So the screw gauge or spirometer can measure 10 to the power it will go still deeper 10 to the power minus 5 meter that lowest lowest length it can measure is 10 to the power both like screw gauge or spirometer the lowest length they can measure is 10 to the power minus 5 meter the highest is like again 2 3 millimeter it depends on the quality of screw gauge and then your requirement the highest range that uh, highest value that can be measured differs it's not too big it is hardly of you know two three millimeter or one one two millimeter something like that this can be used this is the lowest value these two can so in the uh, direct method like uh, being an individual present and measuring so we we measure like in uh, in daily life what we want that we measure like even uh, like uh, compass scales also we use compass scales in daily life what is being required uh, like direct method we can use like da daily like what hardly we just in uh, uh, these ranges we can measure right or not direct method there so direct method no problem using instrument you can measure it but here important is indirect method we'll see few are the indirect methods for measuring the lens let me see one by one okay <coughs> See here. Now, first, let me take indirect. Okay, let me have a heading indirect methods. Indirect methods for measuring. For measuring large distances. Okay, indirect method for measuring large distances. Okay. In that first, let me take triangulation method for triangulation method for measuring height of for 
measuring for measuring height of accessible object accessible objects okay triangulation method this is this is an indirect method let us see accessible object accessible means let us say here uh, it is a one uh, tower or a tree whatever you can say this is its height is h it is on tower or tree whatever so we wanted to measure the height of this we wanted to measure the height of this this is the ground we wanted to measure height of this right okay now by standing at one point by standing at one point say at the point a on the ground we use here telescope here we use telescope here so what do you do using you know here the name accessible comes because the distance of bottom of the tower from the point of observation here i am observing the tip of the tower from here i am observing tip of the tower the distance of a from the bottom let me say bottom of the tower be b here this distance is accessible let this be x here x is accessible you can measure that so x is accessible means you can measure that from the bottom of the tower to the point where you stand and observe the tip of the tower so here so you are observing it using telescope the line of sight of you will be like that the line of sight of you will be like that right or not line of sight okay line of sight let me take here now line of sight like that okay this is the line of sight from here using the telescope you are observing this tip of the tower line of sight is this right or not okay now here using you know sexto sextant the device we call it is sextant so using the sextant it is a device actually it has got a, a protector like that this is a protector it is angles here angles are there like that here one telescope has been uh, you know here one telescope is there in that telescope this is a telescope using you know uh, this te this telescope how you rotate how you rotate the angle also changes angle also changes this is line of sight line of sight so this is sextant this device we say it is sextant sextant remember this is having a telescope inbuilt and as well as protector also reward okay it is a device for uh, uh, like you know like measuring the angle subtended by some distance of that so we can see this is a telescope through which we can see and if i rotate this telescope depending on where i am observing if i rotate it the angles we get to know angle also if suppose next sight is like that so you can measure the angle you can measure the angle so this sextant as we rotate this uh, telescope we can get to know the angles through which we are rotating the telescope this is a device we call sextant you might have heard it okay let it be so yeah so i'll use here uh, <coughs> that sextant here now what i'll do here okay here for using that telescope you know that sextant built of telescope i measure this angle one the line of sight is like that i measure this angle i measure this angle now you can use your trigonometry i want height i want height i know x because x distance i can find it i can use tan theta now here what is tan theta equal to what perpendicular by let this be c you can say what is perpendicular um, perpendicular is b bc right or not that base here is what what is tan theta perpendicular by base what is base here it will be ab what is perpendicular here is h and base here is x therefore h is equal to x into tan theta remember here this method is used for measuring the height of a tower but it is access accessible because so from the bottom of the tower up to point where we are observing it this x can be accessible we can measure that x right or not this x we can measure it see here theta here x any how we measure it theta we are getting it from x extent using the telescope right or not so using the value of theta 
and tan theta will get to know and then x is also in a measure we can find the height of the tower this is indirect method here you are not gone with a scale to lift you know lift the tower you are not lifting you, you are not uh, you know uh, going along the tower here just sitting at one point a you have done all the things of course you have measured x x you have measured that that minimum you need to go for so we have found theta using a uh, telescope in in a protector inbuilt telescope so we have found theta this is where we can find the height of tower okay in the same way in the same way in the same way let me take the second one here second one like triangulation method for measuring height of accessible no now i'll take inaccessible triangulation method triangulation method for measuring for measuring inaccessible you know height of inaccessible objects height of inaccessible objects inaccessible objects here means what let me tell you inaccessible objects here in this case <coughs> suppose you have like you know you have one mountain here it's a mountain you can say right so this is a ground here it is a mountain right okay right done okay this is, you can say on mountain so the height of that mountain i want i mean i want this the height of mountain i want i want this i want this right okay so earlier how x i found from bottom of the tower is it possible to go to bottom of the mountain here like for example from here i'll start observing this tip let me say here this tip here be you can say same c here the point where i am observing let this be a and let this be b here is it possible to find ab distance because it is a mountain am i right it is what here it is a mountain right or not it is a mountain no you cannot go like how we have found x you cannot go from a to b because this is a mountain up to here you can but inside you cannot that's the reason this comes in inaccessible heights you cannot go you cannot find that x what you have found here x ab distance you cannot find so in that slight different again let me find here height of the mountain okay let this be a mountain here in this case how will you find the height of that mountain nothing same thing no problem okay see here <coughs> Okay, whatever from here to be, whatever may be, let us call x. Later on, we eliminate it. Will not use. Will not bring it into the final equation. From here, using again telescope, observe it. The line of sight, observe it. From here, observe it. From here, observe it. Right. This is the line of sight when we are standing at here, observing to see. Now, slight you move from here. Somewhere you come here. Somewhere you come here. I'll come to one more point. I'll come to one more point. Let us say it is D. From here again I'll observe. One thing first. From here again you observe. Let me write here. Again I'll write. I, I'll observe to this tip of the mountain. Again line of sight is this. Right. When you are here using again the sextant, using telescope with the protector, that is sextant means telescope with the protector, it's a device. So using that, okay, we will measure first this angle. Okay, let me, okay, let me measure this angle first. Let that angle be theta 1, like that. Like one time like that, telescope you will, from here horizontal, telescope you turn it through like that. And again see the tip, one time horizontal, 
another time just slowly rotate it and see the tip of the mountain the angle swept the angle turn out turned by that telescope that gives you that it's a part and parcel of that instrument it will give you so it will be t tower now come to d assume that how much distance you come from a to b say it is small d getting my point small d is it right now so again you see that again using telescope from here again it turn it through the telescope horizontal again turn it through like that in this direction again you will get some angle let this be theta 2 right let this be theta 2 now apply your uh, cot theta you apply here cot theta you will come to know why i use cot theta cot theta is opposite of tan theta no so earlier we taken perpendicular by base now this time base by perpendicular now you can apply cot cot theta concept to triangle right angle triangle a b c in the from from right angled triangle a b c use cot theta therefore cot theta here which angle which here theta one is the angle in this a b c cot theta one equal to it is like opposite to like how you have taken uh, uh, here in this case what we have taken here opposite by adjacent no here cot is reverse of tan theta so it will be adjacent from here to here what is the adjacent value x divided by what is the opposite value height h we have got cot theta one value <coughs> right or not okay now in the same way you apply your same concept to another triangle what is that d b c d b c now from triangle like okay here now from again right angled triangle what is this d b c d b c again cot theta cot theta 2 this time angle is what 2 no cot theta 2 equal to here again base here to here d to b is base what is that d plus x divided by again the height will be perpendicular is same like base by perpendicular right or not this is cos theta 2 we have got cot theta 1 value we have got cot theta value my intention is to eliminate x here by, because x is inaccessible you cannot access this x value because up to your mountain is there okay or not so at that time so what i'll do cot theta 2 minus cot theta 1 i'll write i'll subtract this from this See here cot theta 2 minus cot theta 1 equal to this I'll write first. Is it d plus x by h can be written d by h plus x by h minus what is that? I am subtracting it now x by h. So here this this gets cancelled here x by h. Then what is remaining here? d by h. Here cot theta. 2 minus cot theta 1. So we want what here? H, the height of the mountain. So therefore, height of mountain is equals to H you bring here D divided by cot theta 2 minus cot theta 1. So is there X here? We have eliminated X. Is there X here? We have eliminated that X. So we have taken first, but later on, by subtracting, we have eliminated that. This is the formula. Like such many things we use, mixing up of mathematics, physics, in the indirect method, mixing physics and mathematics, we we anyhow, we go for measuring, even uh, we cannot access directly. We can measure them. Getting my point? So this is there. Okay. Now after this, we will move for another. Uh, though these things, uh, these, these two are just a, uh, you need to have some idea, but we find actually what we have in NCRT is next. This is some extra type, okay or not? That now in syllabus, what we have, we'll move on for that, uh, for finding indirect uh, indirect methods for finding the bigger lens. For that, what we have in the NCRT, will go for now. This, let, let it be this, okay? Keep with you, okay? Now I'll go for it. Okay, now... 
parallax method let me write first parallax okay see here <clears throat> remember uh, in the, when you were in the schooling or just like you know below 10th class even i don't know now also what is some funny things you might have done like holding pen closing one eye holding pen in front of your or closing one eye and looking at that pen then you will find uh, this pen is covering some points of the wall if i close one eye and if i look at the pen with another eye like that if i see then definitely this pen is located some part some some point on the wall right or not this pen is exactly it is at some position of the wall by closing this if you hold the pen then this this pen is on the wall it will lie somewhere one location it, it will lie in one some particular location like like that the moment when you open it and close it this pen will shift here okay or not when you when you close this eye when you look at pen and when you compare it on the wall this pen will be on the wall somewhere in one particular location of the wall when you open this eye and look at the pen that pen will fall in one particular location of the wall and when you close this when you look at from this this pen will shift this side and it will go another part of the wall right or not so this might be observed like like that and you are seeing this pen will be if you are observing from this side if you are observing from this side the pen will shift this side opposite to i if you are closing this and with this side if you see it will try to shift this side you might observe this you might have gone through this right or not is it right likewise by holding a pen in front of you we seeing with right eye closing the left eye you know with right eye if you see this pen on the wall it will be somewhere you know uh, some, some part of the wall behind this pen will not be visible some part of the wall behind this pen will not be visible suppose by closing this if you see from here pen will shift this side and another part of wall will come behind this pen getting my point likewise by seeing from two different observation like by seeing from two different observation the position of this pen or position of any object with respect to one fixed background here is a wall the position of this pen will shift if we observe it through different observations like from left eye observation or right eye observation or it may be like from by standing at one position of the earth and again standing at another position of the earth if you look at any one object that object will shift with respect to one fixed background okay or not like that so what i am saying when you observe any object from two different locations in this case it is left eye and right eye so that object with respect to fixed background it will appear to shift it will appear to shift that apparent shift in the object with respect to fixed background that apparent shift we call it is parallax i tell you suppose see here this is the pen this is the pen let this be o right suppose suppose you know this is you can say you are from here you are observing so suppose this is the wall this is the wall say this is the wall right so this is wall you can see done wall this is a pen you have hold it assume this is here your left so it is one eye say left eye and somewhere here it is right eye it is a left eye you can say it is a right eye left eye it is right eye okay or not like that. okay by closing the right eye by closing the right eye like that i am seeing by closing the right eye i am finding i am this say this is a pen or anything else this is holded like that now i by closing the right eye with the help of left eye if i observe this the line of sight will be this side line of sight is this side right or not it means so this pen is supposed to be in this wall like that the pen is here with respect to wall the pen location will be here like that i am seeing 
right eye is closed left eye is open with that left eye i am observing it line of sight will be this side this pen with respect to wall it is appear to be here right or no now in the same way again if i observe it from if i observe it from right eye by closing the left eye observing from right eye the line of sight will be this side line of sight will be this side right or no the line of sight will be this side so the same pen when i see from right eye it appears to be it appears to be here right or no it appears to be in this direction right or not so therefore this 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 pen on the wall will come here earlier pen on the wall position is here pen from left eye if i see the pen appears to be here on the wall pen is here only pen is here only appears to be i am saying pen appears to be in this position in this direction of sight in this dar by closing the left eye if i use observe it from right eye the position of this pen appears to be with respect to the fixed background i am saying with respect to the wall this pen is appears to be here getting my point therefore what is parallax is apparent shift in the position of the object like pen is appears to be here and then later appears to be here the apparent shift apparent shift in the position of the object apparent shift in the position of the object with respect to fixed background when we observe from two different locations when we observe from two different locations how do you write this how do you write it see upper parallax means i'll just write here parallax means apparent shift in the position of the object apparent shift in in the position of position of object position of object with respect to with respect to fixed background like wall fixed is respect to fixed background fixed background when we observe when we observe observe from two different two different two different locations two different locations here is left and right are two different locations getting my point there may be in practical life you know you may observe from like 10 km away from one time and then one time here from here one time and 10 km away away one time you are observing to any one tower okay you are of some one tower is there on the earth one time you are observing the tower from here and another time one on 2 km away uh, sitting there also you are observing the same tower sometime uh, left and right eye are the two locations of observation sometime you may choose uh, uh practically more distance separation location uh, observation observation locations will be more separated that there is also possible depending on requirement i tell you as i move on so here the separation between the observation points we call it is say this left eye here and this is right eye. this separation between observation points we call it is basis what is it is basis what you call it is basis is what the distance between the two uh, observation points now the angle subtended by this basis at the object here object it may be pen or whatever this angle theta is what you call parallactic angle or parallax uh, par parallax angle parallactic angle or parallax angle so here what is basis here basis is what it is the distance between you can write it is the distance between distance between what two observation point two observation points getting my point that is basis what is theta here here theta is angle subtended by basis at the object theta is what angle subtended 
subtended by angle subtended by basis at the object this angle is you you can call this as what parallactic angle parallactic angle getting my point parallactic angle right likewise this is actually it might might how you felt more funny in when you were childhood or even sometime you and now also you might have doing it looks funny you know so by closing one eye if you observe it it will shift one side if you if you observe from other eye it will shift always away from the eye if you see from right eye the it appears to be going this side if you see from this side it appears to be shifting this side away from the line of sight sorry away from the observation point right or not so if i see from here it will go that side if i see from here it will go that side like that so that might have been funny but it plays a very important role in finding distance of the star from the earth distance of the planet from the earth and the size of the sun size of the planet size of the star this might be a very funny thing when you are using it but this plays a very important role in finding very larger distances right or not let me move on now using this parallax concept how can i measure the distance of moon let me take first small distance distance of moon or uh, any planet let me go on. i'll i'll just use this okay see here determination now i'll take determination of distance of distance of moon or planet by parallax method by parallax method getting my point okay determination of distance of moon or planet by parallax method right see or no okay <clears throat> okay here let me take here okay this is earth here this is earth right this is let me say this is earth earth right now somewhere here is we can say moon or planet this is moon or planet moon or any planet now what you have to do first of all what you have to do okay let me just i'll do here so i'll take here I guess here. Suppose here is this is you can say Earth. This is Earth. Earth, right? Now here is a you can say Moon here. This is the Moon. You can say Moon or any planet. from two points okay one thing is you can say uh, moon is very near to us now consider far off star very far off star plenty of stars will be there in the sky let us consider very far off star let that star be let me say this star be s dash very far off star right when star okay let 
one thing you remember you might have observed when you are going in the train uh, you might have expect when you are going in the train or in the bus uh, very next to road or very next to uh, railway track the trees are going past back if suppose you are moving forward the trees are going back fast very quickly am i right or not but very far off mountain or you know you can take you can take in night you can take uh, uh, moon or like far off object you take even train covers bigger distance also that sun it appears to be there only but nearby trees and whatever nearby bridges and all they go very quickly back have you observed it suppose you were in the train nearby near to the train like near to the railway tracks the objects nearby you quickly they go back and the object which are far away from you like you are looking at this sky suppose sun is there in a day that sun even after the train covers 20 30 km or whatever still that sun appears to be in the same direction it means the object which are very far away it looks almost in the same place even after you cover some appreciable distance but nearby objects will uh, go very quickly relative to uh, back very quickly relative to your train this is the am i right or not in the same way i am considering very far off star now what i'll observe this star from one place of the earth from here i'll observe it the line of sight of observation will be line of sight of the observation will be this from here i am observing it right okay now with the help of again sextant i mean it's just a telescope built with uh, protector sextant okay one time i observe this star like that like that i observe with the telescope like that i observe it this is a telescope you say i'll observe that far star right or not yesterday i told you our very nearest star itself is what in our solar system out of solar, our solar system very nearest star itself is 4.3 light year away very far right or not okay this is a line of sight i am observing first then thereafter i'll turn my telescope slowly like that and i'll observe this right on i'll observe no next this i'll observe it then how much telescope you have moved it how much telescope you have moved it how much telescope you have moved it this angle let this be phi 1 how much angle you have moved it right or not next tell your friend or someone at the same time when you are observing measuring this angle at the same time tell your friend because earth is moving at the same time when you measure this angle at the same time tell your uh, friend who is sitting here at a distance let me say he is sitting at a distance of let me say he is sitting at a distance of you know say b with rest like here one time you are observing and at the another place b your friend is there at the same time when he observes this star because remember this yes does this star is so far like as i told you you are in the train if you look at the sun even you cover 20 30 km that sun direction of sight will be same so like that your friend also appears this star s dash in the same sight in the same direction he he will also find it he will also find in the same direction as the same star in the same direction he will find it same direction same direction he will find it with the help of telescope he can observe it right or not tell your friend to even from here he observe to moon also tell your friend to observe even to moon also right so telescope now one time is this side one time you observed far off star then another time you are observing to moon another time you are observing to moon the angle through which your telescope turns let this be phi 2 let that be phi 2 right or not now see it now let us draw one
Okay. Now, if this is phi 2, it will also be phi 2. This will also be what? Phi 2. If this is both are alternative angle type. And this is phi 1, it will also be what? Phi 1. Right or not? Now, see here, the distance of moon to earth, let that distance, can I say it is D? The distance of moon to, right? Let that distance be D. Now here B will act like an arc. B will act like an arc. You can say one circle, like very smallest part of very smallest part of this circle will be straight no very smallest part of the circle will be straight no like in this case what we'll be saying here so b is very very small compared to distance of the moon from the earth here b is what very very small compared to the distance of moon from earth definitely this distance is very massive compared to the b Therefore, it looks like straight, but still it is an arc of circle. Very small part of the circle is straight itself. Very small part of the circle means what? That is very negligible compared to the radius. Here radius will be D here and B is an arc. Now you imply your same formula. What is this total? Let me say theta is equals to what is your arc length divided? Same formula arc length. Arc length divided by radius arc length divided by radius okay or not what is arc length here i am saying it is b here what is radius here it will be d distance of that moon from the earth let that be d here right or not where theta is what here complete parallactic angle angle subtended at the angle subtended this is what theta angle subtended at the moon okay by this this parallax angle this side one parallax angle, this side one do total parallactic angle subtended the moon will be what? Theta or you can write even phi also, no problem, you can write phi also, phi, this is phi you can say total, okay, that phi equal to this arc length divided by radius, what is that phi equal to what? Phi 1 plus phi 2 is equals to this B divided by D, we want D, therefore D is equals to b divided by phi 1 plus phi 2. What is d here? Where d here is distance of distance of moon from earth. Distance of moon from earth. Right or not? What is b here? What is B here? That you can measure the distance between the two points that you are observing. Where B is distance distance between two point of observe. B is what? Distance distance between two points of observation. Two points of observation. Hitting my point? Distance between two points of observation. Like B and O will be knowing phi 1 and phi 2 will be known from the sextant here. Here using you can find phi 1 as well as phi 2. Can we find B is what we have? We have separation between two points on the earth. We can measure it. So using angle we can find the distance of moon or any planet from the earth. Okay. This angle we call parallax angle. Because of line of sight differs. One time we are observing it to very far up star and then we have turned it over line of sight. Then we are observing to moon and this is what the angle through which we have turned our telescope and the same here the angle subtended at the moon from two different observations we got to know. That is phi. So knowing that phi we can find the distance of moon. Very useful but earlier it was a funny for you. But it is very useful for finding the distance of moon from earth. Right or not? So this is what we can say parallax method for measuring the distance of moon and, and any uh, you can moon or any planet. Right or not? Okay. This is that. 
same parallax method i use for measuring the diameter of sun or even you can say diameter of moon also right let me see for oh, that next thing is what okay again let me same par parallax method only i use determination of determination of diameter of moon or any planet or any planet using parallax parallax method right we'll see determination of dm diameter of moon or any planet using parallax method same same thing we uh, go here also right see or no suppose uh, this is a moon or any planet right 